Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of CliffX Pro Q&A. Today we're going to take a look at somewhat of an advanced subject, and that's user actions. All right. In a nutshell, user actions are actions that you can create yourself that work just like built-in actions. Okay. Now, this does involve programming, and I know that scares people off, but it really shouldn't. All right, uh, because the the programming involved is is a lot simpler than you might think for a couple reasons. First of all, we use Python, uh, which is a, one of the more simple programming languages from a syntax standpoint. Um, it reads a lot like English. And secondly, uh, in user actions, CliffX Pro does most, if not all, of the heavy lifting for you. All right, so the code that you have to write and the complexity of that code is relatively minimal. All right, so I'm hoping that uh, this video will help people uh, understand that this is a feature they should be utilizing because it's extremely powerful and allows you to get exactly what you want out of CliffX Pro. So enough talk, let's jump in and see how this actually works. So first, a quick primer on user actions. We provide this file named examplactions.py. The manual covers how to locate that. And this file includes a bunch of instructions and information as well as examples. You can see that all here. All right, so you'll certainly want to give that a read and, and, a, and a look over. All right, but the basic idea with user actions is that there's four types of actions you can create. A global action, track action, device action, or clip action. And those work exactly how they sound. So, for example, a track action would be an action that applies to a specific track. Uh, and a global action is something that doesn't apply to tracks, devices, or clips. All right, uh, so that's the basic gist. Now, for our first example, uh, this one comes from the forum. The user wanted to be able to apply actions relative to a specific track. Now, you might already know that we can do that um, when it comes to the selected track, but via this little caret symbol. All right. So what this means is that uh, this this will mute the track that's to the right of the selected track. All right. So track five is getting muted there, and this will randomize the volume of the track next to it. All right. But again, the user wanted to be able to do this for uh, a given track that may not be selected. All right. So uh, this is not going to work, um, and it's not something that CliffX Pro can do, but thankfully it's something we can address with user actions. So let me just name this track here, uh, my track. This would be the track that uh, we're going to apply actions relative to, and then we're going to develop our action. All right, and so let's just write what our action might look like. Let's say my track slash, and the name of the action, uh, let's say next might be a good name for it. And then after that, we'll specify the action that we want to perform on that track. So let's do mute. And then as another example, let's do uh, volume rand. Okay. Now we need to code the action. So we'll go back to my editor. So first we need to add our action. Again, it's going to be a track action. Its name is going to be next. And then we need to specify the piece of code that's going to be called when we trigger the action. And let's call that apply track action, sorry, to next track. Okay, and now we need to write that piece of code. So we'll do that by going def, the name of the code, and then this code needs to receive two arguments, action def and args. We'll see what those do in just a second. All right, now, typically when you're developing actions, you're going to want to uh, see what's going on in the code. And you do that by writing stuff to Live's log file. So to do that, we'll say canonical parent log message. And we want to just log out uh, what we're receiving here. So we'll log auction, action def. Okay. And then we also want to do the same thing, but for args. So we'll just copy this whole line and put uh, args in here. Now we'll reload that set and we can see what happens when we trigger that action. So I'll go ahead and do that. And now let's take a look at the log. There's two pieces of information. Uh, the first is the action def, which is a dictionary that contains a bunch of, of useful stuff that we'll need. And the next thing is args. All right, and args is anything that, that follows the action name. So in this case, uh, it's the word mute. Uh, if I triggered this one, it would be volume R&D. All right, let's go back to action def. Again, this, this contains a bunch of different stuff. Um, the piece that we need though, let's just look at this here, is this track listing here. Okay, and what this is going to give us is the track object, in this case, this track here, that we're going to apply our actions to. All right, so ClipX Pro is giving us that track, and we can do whatever we need with it. All right, in this case, we want to find out what its index is. All right, so we need to do that in the code. And uh, to do that, we need to be familiar with the API a little bit. We can get the information we need uh, from this page on cycling site on the live object model. 
All right, and what we need to do first is get the track list. All right, so that's part of song. All right, and its name is just tracks. So if we were to do this in Max for Live, we would use live set space tracks. In the API, it's slightly different. Uh, it's gonna be live set is actually self song, and we don't use spaces, we use dots. So it would be self song dot tracks. All right, so let's put that in here. What we wanna do is get the index of the track. So what we're gonna do is, sorry, self, geez, self song dot tracks. All right, now, slightly technical note, self song tracks is actually not a list, it's a vector. All right, and what we need to do is turn this into a list so that we can get indexes from it. All right, so we're gonna say uh, index, and the index we want is the track object. All right, and we could pull the track object out of action def, our dictionary, by specifying track. All right, so what this means is, hey, tell me the index of this track within the track list, okay? And let's log that out. So instead of action def here, I'm gonna put track index, and let's reload the set and see what happens now. All right, so let's trigger the action and then see what's written in the log. Okay, so you see we get three here. All right, that looks wrong, right? Because my track is actually track number four. One, two, three, four. The reason this is three is that because in most programming situations, we don't start counting at one, we start counting at zero. So track one is zero, track two is one, track three is two, etc. All right, so this is one lower than kind of the friendly track names that we see in live and that we use in ClipX Pro itself. All right, so we'll need to offset this index by one, all right, and that'll get us the index as far as ClipX Pro and the UI here is concerned. So my track is track number four. And again, we wanna apply actions uh, to the track next to it, so we'll actually have to offset this by two, all right? So let me go back to the code now, and instead of uh, just leaving the index as is, we'll add two to it, all right? And now let's reload that set and see what we get. All right, so we'll trigger this now, and we should see five now. That's exactly what we get. Now we wanna make sure that this works no matter where my track is. So let's test that by adding another track in here. And now it should be six that we get in the log when we trigger the action. Let's see. Okay, perfect. All right, so we got what we need there. The next thing to do is finish up our code. All right, so we're, we're just gonna simply tell ClipX Pro to, to execute whatever action we pass and that action is gonna be listed in args to the track index, okay? So the action, sorry, the action looks like this. This is gonna be the form of the action. So it's gonna be the track index slash the argument, the arguments that we receive, all right? And we'll fill in those blanks, again, with track index and args, okay? And there's a handy function uh, that's listed up in the notes, you don't need to memorize this, that uh, allows you to trigger ClipX Pro actions or action lists. In this case, it's just gonna be a single action, and we'll paste that in here. Okay, so let's just run through the code again. We're getting the index of the selected track, then we're adding two to it to offset and get, the, get to the index of the track after it. We're creating the action that we want ClipX Pro to perform, and then we're telling ClipX Pro to trigger that action. All right, so now let's give it a go. And we should now have what we want. So track mute, volume rand. And just to show you this works, no matter what the action is, I'll change this here to volume ramp 10, uh, zero. All right, and now this will ramp the tempo down. All right, that'll work with any track action. Doesn't matter what. All right, so there's one example. For the next example, let's look at a case where we only want to trigger an action if some condition is met. All right, and in this case, let's say we wanna add a track, but only if that track doesn't already exist. So first, let's just look how we can add tracks to the set to begin with. So uh, for that, let's add an audio track. We'll add it at the end of the track list. And then we also wanna name it, so we gotta wait for it to be created, and then we'll name it. And let's say we'll name it drums. Okay, so that will add a track and name it drums. All right, but this is not conditional. If I trigger this again, it'll add another, if I trigger this again, sorry, it'll add another track named drums, all right? And that's what we don't want. We wanna be able to only add the track if it doesn't already exist in the set. So again, we'll turn to user actions for that. All right, so let's first save this file. And uh, the user action, uh, in this case, is probably gonna be a global action, right? Because it's not specific to a particular track. It's sort of a set-wide type of action. And uh, let's call it uh, add if, all right? And we'll specify the name of the track, which is drums. 
All right. And again, what we want this to do is only add a new track and name it if that track doesn't already exist in the set. All right. So we'll save the set and let's code up that action. So again, this is going to be a global action. Its action, its name is going to be add if, and then we'll call it add track if not already present. Oops, sorry. Okay, now let's define the code. In this case, we don't need the action def, so we're just gonna put an underscore to indicate that. We only care about the args here, okay? Now, how are we gonna code this action? What do we need to do? Well, first we need to get the track name, and that's gonna be given to us in args, right? So in this case, um, the argument is gonna be drums, okay? And it's gonna be in quotes, um, whereas the track name is not gonna be in quotes. So we actually have to strip those quotes off, and we can do that like this. So track name equals args, and we'll take it from the second character, which again is represented by the number one, not by, not by two, and we wanna get up until the last character, we wanna drop the last character, so for that we'll use negative one. So one colon negative one, that'll give us the track name. Now, we need to go through the track list and see if that track name exists in the track list. So for that we'll go for track in, sorry, in self song tracks, if track dot name equals track name, sorry, we're gonna return. And return just means stop processing right now, don't do anything further, okay? That's what we want. If this track already exists, we do nothing. Otherwise, we're gonna trigger the action list to create the track and name it. And the action list is gonna look just like the one that we use in that X clip. So it'll be uh, add audio, sorry, uh, negative one, wait two, and then cell name, all right? And then we're gonna fill in this blank with the track name, okay? And finally, we're gonna use that function we used before, this one here, to trigger the action list, okay? All right, now let's reload the set and see what happens. So we have our add if action, and if I trigger it, it creates a track name drums. If I trigger it again, it does nothing. All right, because again, drums already exists. So a simple example of how to create a conditional action. So I hope that gave you some ideas on how you can leverage user actions to your own benefit. As always, please keep the questions coming and I'll see you in the next episode.